Okay, good morning, everybody. It's Jeff Goldberg for the Sales Pro Network. Here it's Friday. Let's check the date. It's December 10th. It's almost the end of the year. Wow. It's a uh, kind of chilly day here on Long Island. I am a sales coach and trainer. I work with both individuals and organizations to help them gain measurable and sustainable sales increases. And I founded the Sales Pro Network to help you do exactly that and to elevate the profession of sales in general. Uh, as you know, the Sales Pro Network is a place where you can come and hang out, ask questions, get advice and coaching. And every Friday at 10 a.m., I either do a live training or bring you a fantastic guest who can add value to the profession of sales. Uh, I would love to tell you that today's guest is no exception, except he's not here yet. <laughs> now, I think he's on the West Coast, so perhaps there was some confusion and maybe he'll join us in a few minutes. But until then, uh, I'm going to riff for a little bit. Uh, if you're joining us live, please say hello in the comments. If you have not connected your Facebook account to StreamYard, then when you say hello, please put your name in there. Otherwise, all it says to me is Facebook user, and I won't know who you are. Good morning, Steve Kent. Doing it right as every every time. I love that. Uh, if you watch us on the replay, please be sure to put replay in the comments. And uh, any questions at all that I can help you with, stick those in the comments, too. In fact, if we don't uh, have our guests show up at any point, I'll just take your questions for a couple of minutes here and uh help you with uh, whatever kind of sales issues that I can possibly do. But looks like I'm not going to have to do that because he did just show up. So if you give me a second to bring Craig in, we'll get this going. There he is, the man, the legend. Craig. What's up, Jeff? Sorry about that, brother. I was having some technical difficulties, but we're all set. We're ready to rock. Let's do this. <laughs> Good morning. So I was just introducing uh, the group to everybody. Uh, this is the Sales Pro Network. And I was just telling them that every Friday we do a live interview with somebody who can add value to the profession of sales. And I was telling them today should be no exception if the guest shows up. And thank goodness you do. It's my pleasure to introduce everyone in the Sales Pro Network and you to them. This is Craig Land and Steve Siegel. Good morning, Craig. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to be here. So excited. Let's drop some gems. Happy Friday, everybody. We're absolutely going to be dropping gems today. Before we do that, Craig, would you maybe just give everybody the one to two minute version of what brought you up to this point where you became a mindset and performance coach? Absolutely. So I was on Wall Street for the last 10, 11 years. I was in finance and then I pivoted and I started my own business. Essentially, we provided capital, sold loans. Both businesses very lucrative, but as it turns out, making money doesn't necessarily equal success. And so I was kind of unfulfilled, for lack of better words. I was unhappy. I was a bit miserable. I didn't realize it to the extent, but I had all this built up fire and energy in me. And I didn't know what to do because I wasn't so happy with work and so forth. So I channeled it and I started running a bunch of marathons, which was super cool. Um, but I was never going to become a professional runner. But I'm grateful that I did because running is still a big part of my life. In fact, we just ran the New York City Marathon a couple of weeks back. Then ultimately, the pandemic happened, and it provided me an opportunity to kind of just reassess. And, and I realized just how unfulfilled and unhappy I was. And from studying personal development for the last 10 years, using those strategies, which helped me launch those businesses and launch a bunch of marathons, I did have a strategy. So pandemic happened. I shut down my office for what I thought was going to be two weeks last March. Who knew? And I just put myself in this frequency. I'm like, I know I'm meant for more. Like, I know I'm meant to make an impact, to put a dent in the universe, so to speak. And so I just asked myself two very important things. What are my gifts? What are my passions? And so as it turns out, my gifts are my ability to communicate, elevate, and inspire. Hopefully everyone on this call will agree with that by the end. So that's my gift. Now it's, well, what is my passion? That one was simple. I'm absolutely obsessed with all things personal development, removing limiting beliefs, implementing positive thoughts, changing your habits, changing your results. I love this stuff. So I married the two. I married my ability to communicate with my personal development obsession, and I started my CLS brand a little over a year ago, and I'm very humbled to say it's absolutely exploded. We have one of the top five business podcasts on planet Earth, all A-list celebrities who don't typically do interviews, talking mindset and adversity. Keynote speaking, we just spoke at Fiverr, $7 billion company last week. Masterminds coaching, my CLS membership, all of it. And the irony is of all this is, as it turns out, I didn't start CLS for the money because I was doing very well for myself on Wall Street. But when you truly find alignment in this world, what really sets your soul on fire and you do a good job of it, the money comes. And so I make more money now than I ever did on Wall Street. I sold my business and this is it for me. And that's what brought us here today. I love that. Good morning, Ben Gibbs. Good to see you here, my friend and Facebook user who says, good morning, glad to be here. We just know you as Facebook user. So if you'll put your name in there, then uh, we can actually greet you. So I have to tell you, I'm in perfect agreement. Money does not equal happiness. Money, it, it, it can be used as a measurement. And it, I'd say it's easier to be happy um, 
when you have money than when you don't, because if you're not worried about, am I going to be evicted this month? It's easier to not have that pressure on you be happy. But just because you have money uh, and I've had money and not have money. And of course, having money beats the heck out of not having it. But it doesn't make you any happier. The, the true happiness, I believe, comes from within. And I have to agree with you uh, on something else. I'm a personal development junkie. I, I love that stuff. I eat it up with a spoon. I have spent tens of thousands of dollars and hundreds and hundreds of hours in seminar rooms. I, I just eat it up. I, I, I love it. Who are some of the gurus that you really love? You know, obviously the godfather, Tony Robbins, right? He was one of my sources of inspiration when I got involved. Um, you know, what's cool is that since I, I'm a big thinker and for the audience listening, like if you're going to think, you might as well think big. I think so big that people think it's weird. So I've had the opportunity to have and manifest a lot of my you know role models on this my podcast already within just the last year. For example, John Asroff from The Secret, Ed Milet, who's big in the space right now, we just had on the podcast. Uh, you need Bethany Hamilton from Soul Surfer. We've had everybody, Rob Deerdeck from MTV talking all things manifestation, the law of attraction. So I like those guys. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm the type of guy, like kind of probably like you, like I get a message from everything, whether it's a book, a movie this conversation right now, just speaking to you, like I always get something from anyone, but, but some of my mentors or some of the people I love in the space would be right now, Ed Milet, uh, John Asroff, and of course, who doesn't love Tony Robbins? Who doesn't love Tony? Absolutely. Uh, I was actually incredibly impressed when I was, you know, I always do research for these interviews to, to, you know, I go on people's websites and you have some real A-list names on your podcast. I was actually stunned by some of them. Uh, you. You, might, you might know the name James Arthur Ray, who was also in The Secret. He, he was actually a guest here about two or three months ago. Uh, I spent a lot of time with that guy. Um, so let's get to some of your thoughts. Um, one of the things that I saw is that you believe that people are not broken, but their frames often are. What does yeah. that mean? For those who don't understand what framing is. Yeah, and we're going to get deep right now. So I know a lot of people. Strap in, everybody. <laughs> Let's do this. A lot of people suffer from unworthiness or lack of confidence or they have a lot of limiting beliefs. And, and let's be honest, we've all been there. I've been there myself. But here's the thing. It's not really us that feels that way. It's our frame or, as I like to say, our perspective. And we've been conditioned to be a certain way for so long, Jeff, right? Like, whether it be our parents, society, the news, our environment, whatever the case may be, we've developed these limiting beliefs. But here's the good news. None of us were actually born with these beliefs, right, of unworthiness. But that means we've cultivated them over time. And once we become aware of that, we have the opportunity to now understand that those seeds were planted, those negative disempowering seeds were planted over time, and they created disempowering negative beliefs, so it's not us, it's our frame, like I like to say. So here's the good news, right? Thoughts are random, thinking is not. So let me repeat that. Thoughts are random and thinking is not. And what I mean by that is this. Over the course of the day, everybody is bombarded with negative thoughts. The greats, the legends, the ones that are super successful, like you, Jeff, you have the ability to block out that interference. So here's what everybody can do and make applicable right now. Anytime you get a negative thought, just understand it's just a thought. It's random. We have the ability to get rid of it like an intruder in your house. Get out and replace it with a new, more empowering one. Like I am worthy. I do deserve to live the life I desire. I can help people with sales and so forth. And once you start becoming aware and changing your thoughts, that changes your beliefs. Now you believe you can do stuff. I believe I can have these people on my podcast. I believe I can make an impact. That changes our behaviors and our habits, and ultimately that changes our results. So the most important thing that we can discuss today is understanding that we could be strategic with the thoughts and the seeds we plant ourselves, and it will change our beliefs. Yeah, it, it's like racism. Nobody's born a racist. We, we learn that stuff, and, and it, it, it it's all... Every, we're paying attention. Your brain, you know, for those who have studied brain science, your brain's listening to everything that's going on around you and everything that you're saying to it at every moment. And um, if, if anybody's thinking, you know, what's Jeff talk about? Uh, it's listening to me. You know, there's a little voice we all have inside our head. And if you don't know what I mean, it's the little voice that just said, which little voice is Jeff talking about? But it's always jabbering at us. And for most of us, there's a lot of negativity in there. I'm so stupid. I'm so fat. I'm so unsuccessful. I'm so broke. And if you believe in the law of attraction, which we're certainly going to get into it at some point during this conversation, Absolutely. then if you believe you're broke, you're going to keep attracting more brokenness. If you believe you're fat, you're going to keep doing the things that are going to make you fat. 
uh, which clearly is not a problem for you because I've seen enough of your pictures on the website, my friend. <laughs> You're working it hard. So, so let's say uh, let's say that everybody's in agreement with us, and they can argue all they want, but they'd have a hard time. All this stuff is stuff that we've learned over time. How do we go about removing these limiting beliefs that are holding us back from our manifesting our true destiny? Yeah, so and it's a phenomenal question. So just understanding right away that we weren't born with these beliefs, like you just said it, and I never heard it articulated like that, but it's beautifully said, like we weren't born a racist, whatever the case may be. So once you become aware, that's the key to everything is awareness and mindfulness. Once you're aware that these are just cultivated over time through negative seeds and so forth, once we have that understanding, then it becomes fun, right? Because then we can cater our thoughts and we can be strategic and deliberate with the ones we feed ourselves. And just by doing that, like, and also, look, you talk about the law of attraction, which I love. In case you couldn't tell, I could talk about this stuff all day. So when you're feeling a certain type of way, let's just say you're having a day or you're having a moment or you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. That's feedback from the universe telling you that your thoughts are disempowering at that current moment. So this is so valuable because instead of having bad days or bad weeks, now we can limit that to just a bad moment. So if you're ever feeling some type of way for the rest of your life, it's just feedback from the universe telling you your thoughts are not productive. And as soon as you understand it, you just go in, you understand which thoughts are disempowering, you remove them, and then you replace them with the empowering, positive, constructive ones. And then just like that, we start to create new beliefs. And then we start to remove our limiting beliefs, right? So for example, let's just say someone here, and I can't see anyone at the moment, but I'm sure if I did a show of hands, a lot of people would raise their hand at some point in our life. We suffered from a lack of confidence. Everybody has, even the all-time greats. So once we have those thoughts and we understand that we feel unworthy or not confident about something, just a thought. We replace that with, I am confident. I can do this. I have done this in the past. Or I can study some of the all-time greats and figure out some of the attributes that they possess and rub onto myself. And once you start to think that, there's confidence is a skill. Anyone can develop it. So once we have that, then we start to change our beliefs. Yes, we can do this. I believe I'm receiving, right? I'm getting rid of that scarcity mindset. And once you put that frequency out there, the universe likes that. Universe will respond. Yeah. And I always advise people, be gentle with yourself. When you hear one of those negative thoughts, if you don't turn that into, oh, I'm an idiot for having that thought. It's like, oh, I noticed, you know, you mentioned mindfulness. I noticed that I'm thinking a negative thought. Okay, I'm just going to shift that. I'm not stupid. I may have acted stupidly in this instant, but I'm actually very intelligent or I'm very driven or whatever it is. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to start out my day implanting positive thoughts into my mind because to me, everything's a choice. It, it's all a choice. You could wake up and go, oh, crap, another day I got to go to work and I hate my boss and I hate my life and I, I hate everything. Or I wake up with, wow, I'm so happy to be alive. I'm so grateful for my wonderful children and my ex-wife who's a wonderful co-parent and I'm grateful for everything. And I actually, no kidding, I walk the dog every morning. Uh, He's not sitting here, so I can say that. Otherwise, he would have jumped up and he wanted want to go out. Uh, but uh, uh, I walk the dog every, every, you know, constantly. But in the morning, you know, I've got about ten minutes worth of affirmations. I just say to myself out loud while I'm walking the dog with a smile on my face physically because I want to in, uh, release the, the right, uh, you know, chemicals into my brain, you know, oxytocin, all yeah. that stuff. And it's like today's going to be a great day. I'm going to help a lot of people today, and everybody I interact with is going to be thrilled that they were touched by me. And I've got like ten minutes worth of that. And my experience is simply, I tend to have excellent days. Now, like anybody, you know, stuff goes up and down. But for the most part, I'm just loving life because my belief is life's short. It, it seems like it's a long time. But, you know, for most of us, what do we have, 70, 80, 90 years? I keep telling my kids I'm going to live to 120 because I, I had them later in life and I want to watch them grow up. But really, 80, 90 years, man, I'm, I'm on the last third, my friend. Life's short. You better enjoy every second. I want to get to something uh, you and I both brought up before, because I'm not sure that everybody's familiar with it, or maybe they heard it a million years ago. Let's talk a little bit about the law of attraction. For those who don't know, could you please define what it is and how it can be used? And guys, if you have any questions for Craig, please put them in the comments. I'll make sure we ask them. Yeah, guys, please. I love the engagement. Ask away. Don't be shy. So the law of attraction is a beautiful thing. And it's funny because it's somewhat new to me, if I'm being honest. I've always been a mindset guy. And... And that, now it turns out is the mindset is just the appetizer for all this like quantum stuff and this energy fields and it's so exciting. And the truth of the matter is, is like the law of intention is all about the law of intention, right? The law of attraction is intention. It's putting out an intent. 
and, and understanding that when you put out a frequency into the universe, that half the battle is already won because you're putting out that intention. And now, like if you are very strategic with your thoughts about that intention and they're positive and empowering, that will obviously change your beliefs on what's possible for you. And then you'll start to begin to change your habits and what's necessary, right? So there's a bit misconception of the law of attraction. It's not just like, oh, I hope there's a, a red Ferrari in my driveway tomorrow and you wake up. No, like you have to use the law of Goya also, right? Get off your ass and, and you <laughs> actually have to make things happen. So bottom line is this, the law of attraction is so powerful because everything is intention. And if we're going to get, if you don't mind if I get a little weird, because I am very weird, let's just think about this for a second. We're a body right now, right? Inhabiting a soul and a spirit. This is just a vessel. But before we were a body, we were an embryo. Before we were an embryo, we were a seed. Before we were a seed, we were formless energy. And our father had an intent, did something with our mom. And essentially, we went from nothing to here. That was an intent, right? So once we understand that we have the ability to create anything, that's when life really begins to be fun. And when you put yourself in that high vibration or that good frequency, you shoot out thoughts that are positive. And, and every single thought is an electrical signal to the quantum field. To You ever like be around someone and you're like, oh, you know, they have great energy or they're a good vibe and you want to be around them. And on the flip side, there's people that kind of drain you and you want to distance yourself from them. It's no different. We're all energy. Everything is energy. So when you put out great thoughts out there and then you start to take action towards it, the universe has no choice but to correspond. But be very careful because this is a very slippery slope, right? The opposite happens as well. The universe is a mirror. So if you're one of those cats that always put out negative vibes and negative thoughts and like you like you stub your toe, you get parking tickets, whatever the case may be, like that's a frequency too. But the good news is, is you can change it in an instant as soon as you become aware and you can, and to be honest with all this quantum stuff, like this is the first time that I've actually started to see real time manifestations happen in real life, but you can't just think it. You have to feel it with, with your entire being, put out the positive signals and feel it. And the universe will correspond to it. Yeah. I, I love that you mentioned stubbing your toe because uh, I, I have a belief about that. Uh, you know, I believe the mind is infinitely powerful, infinitely. And we get to choose how we react to almost anything. Um, and I put this to the test uh, when uh, when I learned about this. You know, when you stub your toe, most of us are in huge pain and, we're, oh God, as soon as I stub my toe, it's like, that wasn't bad, I'm okay. And the pain isn't there. It, it, here's another great example. I, I have seasonal allergies in the spring. I, I get really bad allergies. My, I want to rip my eyeballs out of my head. <laughs> uh, there, there have been days uh, when I've had to spend the whole day in bed in the beginning beginning of that spring allergy season uh, it, it's just horrific. And the amazing thing to me is, as a speaker, when I'm getting introduced, you know, I can be on a stage, you know, oh, my God, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. I'm dying here. Uh, you know, you're sick or you got the flu or my allergies are killing. But when, when I hear the words, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Jeff Goldberg. There's an hour there that I don't remember my allergies because I'm focused on what I'm doing and I'm not focusing on the pain. It's amazing how powerful we really are. And we, we do limit ourselves by not... Um, accepting what powerful creators we are and taking advantage of that. So um, so, something I I, I, uh, read on your site, you talk about modeling and anchoring. Could you say what those are and how can we use those? Yeah, these are really powerful tools, especially for sales or or really for anything like a lot. And again, I said earlier in the conversation that developing confidence is a skill, right? Most people aren't born confident or not, but over time, we either have you know confidence or we have insecurities, whatever the case may be. Here's a great effective tool that everybody can apply right now. I would suggest making a list of some of the people that you hold in very high regard. Maybe it's The Rock, maybe it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, maybe it's Beyonce, J Lo. For me, I like to use James Bond, 007, whatever the case may be, right? What makes those greats tick? What do they do very well that gives them success, right? And I would I would make a list because this is a fun exercise. I would make a list of about five different people you hold in high regard. On the right side of the page, I would just write a few attributes that they possess that make them great in your opinion. So, for example, for me, James Bond 007, assertive, confident, right? No doubts uh, and, and all that stuff. So if I were to model James Bond, and for example, when I first got to Wall Street, I was doing a lot of sales. I didn't have confidence because I don't have experience. So I understood this exercise by studying the mind and NLP and stuff. And essentially, 
I would model attributes that James Bond had, and I would bring them on to myself. So, for example, when I was in a boardroom of 200, you know, financial advisors, and, and they were super experienced, I was no longer Craig Siegel who didn't have experience. I was modeling James Bond. Even the way I walked into that office with a swagger, do you think James Bond loses sleep over a rejection on the phone? Or if someone says, no, I'm not interested, you think that guy is going to like go into downfall? No, that guy doesn't care. He's just on to the next one. That guy is going to go up there and approach the pretty girl at the bar. Nothing's going to stop him. So I would start acting like he would. But but not only like the physical attributes, but like what are the quality of his thoughts? And, and ultimately, I started gaining a lot of confidence because even though I wasn't experienced, I was modeling James Bond. And just to be clear, this isn't like when we go to sleep at night, like I'm still Craig Siegel, still Jeff Goldberg. It's just a fun exercise. It's very useful. And to be honest with you, Beyonce, who's one of the greatest performers ever, whether you like her or not, she does the same thing. When she goes on stage, she uses this Sasha Fierce character she taps into. And then when she's off stage, she's back to Beyonce. It's the same concept. Just finding greats in different arenas that you can model some of their attributes for. It's extremely effective and it's also fun. Yeah, I, I love the James Bond uh, example because I've been loving James Bond since I was a little kid. And I, I don't know if you've seen all the movies, but all of them. Uh, well, then then you remember his his first movie from Russia with Love. You know, he he's scuba diving and then he comes out and he peels off the scuba suit and there he is in a gorgeous tuxedo and just <laughs> like you said, he's full of he's full of confidence. And at that point, I was like, oh, I want to be that guy. I want to be a secret agent like James Bond. But it's really about that confidence. You're absolutely right. So something that comes up all the time and. I'm as guilty as anybody else uh, is procrastination in sales. I, I find that working with salespeople like I do, they quite often have the attitude. Well, there's always tomorrow. And for most of us, there is always tomorrow. But my feeling is the more I can accomplish today, the more I can fit in tomorrow, the more people I can serve, the more stuff that will come to me and all that good stuff. So do you have any advice for people about removing procrastination? Because I think it's a big problem for many people. Yeah, I think procrastination kills. And it's funny, I just put on, uh, I just dropped a post on my social media a couple of days back and it, it said something like this. 100% of the things that you do now get done, right? So procrastination, my best suggestion was, was to be to associate procrastinating with pain and associating taking action with pleasure. And I know that sounds like, well, it sounds a little simple, maybe too simple, but no. So like, for example, when I thought of CLS and my new brand, I made it so real for myself because it could be scary. I didn't have experience with the online business and so forth. I associated going back to work, doing something that made me miserable. I associated that with death. And I know that sounds deep, but I wanted to make it very real for myself. So once I, once I had the fear of that, the fear of taking a shot with CLS actually became pleasurable to me. So in regards to procrastination, guys, like procrastination kills. It's deadly and it's a slippery slope. You procrastinate with one thing. And you procrastinate with other things. Here's the thing. When you make a promise to yourself and you keep it, you start to build self-trust. Even if it's something as simple as this, you say you're going to start waking up 15 minutes earlier just to get a head start in the day. That means the next morning when the alarm goes off, you do not press snooze because if you do, then you lose self-trust, right? And self-trust is the key to everything because that builds confidence. It builds worthiness and so forth. So Procrastination, I highly suggest people start associating that to pain because there's nothing good about procrastinating. Sometimes taking messy action is better than taking no action. It's never going to be perfect. It's never the exact right time. But, but 99 out of 100 times, you're not going to regret showing up. You'll regret not showing up. So associate procrastination with pain and, and build that self-trust. Keep promises to yourself. If you say you're going to do something, then do it. And that will build momentum. And you can start with little promises. It doesn't have to be huge, but you build. You, it's like doing reps. You don't go into the gym and lift a weight once and go, all right, I'm pumped, baby. It's constant. <laughs> you got to have rep after rep after rep. Right, yeah. And unless I'm crazy, I'm smelling some Tony Robbins there because I know that's where I got that whole pain and pleasure thing from. It, you know, the, the more pain you can associate to the lack of of achievement of a goal and the more pleasure you can associate to the achievement of it, the greater the likelihood. In fact, with every new coaching client I get, the first thing we do is set goals. Not that I'm setting them for them. I'm, I'm finding out what they want me to help support them in. And it's okay, great. Your, whatever your goal is, if you're committed to it, I'm committed to it. By the way, I, I hope you feel the same way. I don't give a shit what my clients want or dream about or hope for or wish for. I don't care about any of that. As a human, I do. But as a coach, I only care about one thing. 
What are you willing to commit to? Sacrifice. What are you absolutely willing to do no matter what? And when you once they come up with that, usually it's a financial goal because I work with salespeople and sales managers. It's like, great. What pain can we associate to you not achieving the goal? What's going to happen to you if you don't do this by, let's say, December 31st of 2022? And what pleasure, what reward are you going to give yourself? And uh, I, I know you know, too, that I love that. But the way the way we're wired up, we'll do far more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure, which is counterintuitive. But it's just the way the brain works. Uh, The other thing I find is useful. And I know you're big on this, too, is having an accountability partner, having somebody who's going to hold you accountable, because even the I got to believe that even Tony Robbins sometimes needs a little help. Word. You're very big on that with your clients. Yes. Oh, yeah. Even therapists have therapists. Right. Look, Tom Brady doesn't just take the field. He has a coach. So I think everybody, the, the, the biggest piece of advice that I give everyone is seek mentorship. Seek somebody that will hold you accountable. You don't want to be around people that co-sign your bullshit, for lack of better words. Like, oh, you're doing a great job. Oh, it's okay that you missed your workout today. No, because you want to be around people that, that push you to stretch higher and to step out of your comfort zone. And I respect that. If someone's good, like, if I need to be pushed a little bit and someone tells me that, I want that in an accountability partner because that's how I grow. So mentorship is huge. And I don't have any regrets in my life because I believe everything happens for a reason and, and the universe corresponds. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now, specifically having this conversation with you. But if I had to choose one, it would be that I didn't seek out mentorship at an earlier age because having a, another perspective or someone to push you, someone to hold you accountable is absolutely priceless. And, and listen, we all need a push. As long as we can embrace that and then seek out accountability partners and so forth, it's a beautiful thing. You just have to remove the ego from the equation. Everybody, including the all-time greats like a Tom Brady, like a Michael Jordan, work with a coach. Yeah, and uh, I actually spoke to one of Tony Robbins' coaches at one point. Uh, I just forgot his last name, Chet, uh, Chet Holmes before he passed away. Uh, I, I was stunned to find out that he was Tony Robbins' coach. We, we, we all need some help sometime. And I always tell people, uh, you know, you need an accountability partner, but don't make it your mom or your dad or your, your, your family. They love you too much. And I know if I tell, make a promise to my mom and then a week later I check in with her and I've broken my promise, here's what I'm going to hear. Oh, that's okay, Jeffrey. I'm sure you tried your best. <laughs> but what I really need is that, no, that's not acceptable. You gave me your effing word. Keep it. Because we all need that kick in the ass. How about that? Because, uh, by the way, Steve uh, Steve Kent says, always focus on the positive. Yes, sir. Um, rejection is huge in sales. It's a part of every every salesperson's life. And, and I think the smart thing is to realize that not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to buy for you. But it's often difficult to deal with the rejection. How can we overcome sales rejections? You just got to embrace it. You just got to change your perspective and just love it. Because understand and I know this is cliche, but every no gets you closer to a big yes. It just is what it is. It's a numbers game. Look, when I started CLS, I had a little bit of imposter syndrome for a moment. But then I realized, like, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I'm not everyone's glass of whiskey. It is what it is. And you just keep going. And you find the people that align with you and that could use your product or service, whatever the case may be. Obviously, we want to improve and get better so we can limit rejection, so we can get more yeses. But just understand, it's nothing personal. It's really just on to the next one for the, for the sales guys and gals out there. Literally, on to the next one. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay. On to the next one. It is what it is. And obviously, have your rebuttals and stake and so forth so you can make the most and try to turn a no into a yes. Because a lot of people will say no at first and then end up saying yes. But rejection is just part of it. Everything is a numbers game, guys. Like not even just sales. Like in life, right? Like most people don't marry the first spouse that they have, right? Something doesn't work out and then you end up finding someone else. So like it, it just it's just part of life. And especially in sales where the more volume you do, the more opportunity you have for success. And with more volume comes more nose, right? It's just a part of the process. And you can actually change your mindset to associate pleasure with rejection because you know it's not personal and every single rejection will bring you closer and closer to a phenomenal yes. And I know it sounds a little like too simple, too cliche, but it really is that simple. No, it's Don't true. Think it. Rejection leads you closer to the next yes. 
It's true. Uh, my very favorite word in sales is yes. My second favorite word is no. And, and if yes is here, no is right here. Exactly. Everything else down there. Think it over. I got to talk to my partner. I got to take it to the committee. All that sucks. But I'm fine with yes and I'm fine with no. In fact, I advise salespeople, make it easy for people to do business with you and say yes. Make it just as easy for them to say no. Have enough prospects in the pipeline so that somebody's always saying yes. Um, That's right. Yeah. Uh, you might have seen that I was laughing before, too, when you said, you know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I say that all the time. You know, I, not everybody likes wisecracking Jews from New York. You don't like that. I'm not your guy. <laughs> but I don't need everybody to like me. I just need enough people to like me. That's right. And, and also, the first time you and I spoke on the phone, there was so much synergy. And it's just super cool talking to you in person. How do you feel? This just the beginning of the relationship. Could be, my friend. I hope so. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we're halfway through and we're talking to Craig Landon Siegel. He is a performance and mindset coach. And we're talking all about mindset and how it affects sales. Now, um, one of the things that's important in selling is in, in almost every sale, other than a highly transactional one, we need to establish rapport because the truth is people still do business with people they like and trust. And while the trust is the most important part, if they don't like you, unless you've got what they want and they can't get it anywhere else, they're going to go someplace else. So what can we do to build rapport with a prospect? Building rapport, in my personal opinion, is the absolute key to sales. And let me give you an example. If someone's selling me something, right, I would rather do business with someone that I feel a connection to and pay a little more than go down the block and get the product for cheaper, but that's someone that didn't show me any love or, or didn't build any rapport with me. Rapport is everything. Connection is everything. Relationships is everything in life. Depending upon what you're selling, again, 99 of 100 times, they're buying you, not the product. It's just the truth of the matter is. So you want to build rapport. How do you build rapport? Form connections. Form similarities. Model their tonality, right? Like if, if the prospect on the other line is really mellow like this and talks very slow, you don't want to come and go crazy because that's, that's going to kind of push them away. So kind of model a little bit of how they interact and, and find that common ground. And also finding things that you can agree on, right? You're talking to a prospect. It's not just about the product. Maybe somehow in the conversation, you find out that they like scuba diving. So you start talking about that for a couple of minutes. You want to build rapport where there's a connection there, where the person likes you and, and they want to talk to you aside from just a product. And like you said, Jeff, like, Unless you're going to Chanel or Ferrari, like it doesn't matter who sells it to you. You know what you're getting. Everyone else in, in the world, they like to be sold, right? They want to form a relationship. They want there to be some sort of chemistry or a connection. So building rapport is absolutely everything. And a good couple of ways to do it is to model their tonality, to find commonalities, things that you guys can agree on. And also be empathetic. Let them hear them out, Right. Understand that there you've been where they are, and now you're over here, which gives you authority. But at some point, you were where they are. So empathy and compassion, I think, are two really good tools to build rapport. Yeah, I'm going to add in a third. Be interested in them. Be interested. Yeah. Dale Carnegie, who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People, said, it's better to be interested than interesting. And I find that Absolutely true. Look, there's that. nothing I like better than a person or a bunch of people who are going to listen to me talk, except I find that I get much further when I ask questions and just listen because I'm interested in the other person. That's who people want to do business with. Agreed. Somebody interested in them. Somebody who comes in and says, let me tell you why my company is the greatest in the world and you should be using us. I don't have time for that. Be interested in me. Ask me a bunch of questions. If I got the money and, and you want to sell me something, you better be interested in me. Um, you also help people with personal branding, or at least you talk about that. And does a sales piece person need a personal brand? And if they do, how can they cultivate one? Personal branding, I think, is huge, especially going into 2022. It's it's the way I was able to, and I say very humbly, explode my CLS brain in a year's time. You know, people say they've never seen anyone do what I've been able to do in terms of like, you know, like a year ago I had no connections. I had success in business, but that was about it. I had 300 Instagram flowers. Now we have over 100,000. We're verified. We're collaborating with some of the world's biggest celebrities. Rob Dyrdek, Ed Milet, Suzanne Summers, Lisa Silverstone. But I did that by being very strategic with every single thing I did. And this day and age, where like everything you do is monitored. I would really suggest everyone, that every single thing that you do, think of yourself as a personal brand, even if technically you're not. If you're in sales working for a company, maybe you're not necessarily a personal brand, but everything that you do is a reflection on yourself. And if people want to do business with you, so... 
I think treating yourself as a personal brand is huge and key. And even more specifically, building a personal brand is, is huge because look, what if another pandemic happens, right? And you lose your job or that company is no longer there. If you have a personal brand, that's bulletproof. It's recession proof. You can always build upon it. You can step into different arenas. You can go sell for a different company, whatever the case may be. So I think personal branding is huge. And a great way to do it is on social media, where essentially you can save so much money from marketing, where people used to have to pay so much. Now you just have to put yourself out there strategically on social media, and you can develop a massive following if that's what you want. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to use a different word than you did, but you're giving. You're giving generously. Uh, I had about 500 followers on LinkedIn a little over a year ago. I've got over 7,000 now. Why? I'm consistently posting stuff to help people. There's never, ever a sales pitch. It's not come by from me. It's just, here's some advice. The same thing that I charge people for, I'm giving it away. And that's what I found really attracts people. Because look, there's no way somebody can watch a post, uh, like a video for two minutes and say, oh, I know everything Jeff Goldberg has to have. What they do, what I find is it, they're, they're on their side, they're saying, wow, this guy's generously giving something to me. Maybe I want some more. And I have people, and I'm sure you do, who reach out for my social media posts. Say, can we talk? I want, I want to chat with you. I had a guy who reached out to me yesterday and said, uh, can we spend some time together? I said, uh, yeah, what's the conversation about? He goes, I really like your post and I want to talk about working together. I thought I was going to get a sales pitch, but you know, I love that stuff. Love it. <laughs> and there's a Facebook user who says, uh, you're a mensch. Oh, I'm sorry. There was a referral. Very interesting session, Jeff. Thank you for your hard work. It's appreciated. And you're a mensch too. I'm trying my best. And I know Craig is too. Um, so sometimes we all, you know, I, I say sales is, is uh, often a game of ups and downs. M my goal is to help people level that out and keep them at the highest levels of income. But we, I think we've all been there in our sales career where it's good month, bad month, good quarter, bad quarter. So when people hit rock bottom as I think we've all done at some point or some points in our career. How can we ricochet? How can we come back from that? It's a mindset, right? You have to understand that adversity can build character or it can crumble you. So understand, that especially in sales where it's like, and I don't like to use this expression, but it is what it is. You eat what you kill, right? As long as you're out there doing stuff, you're going to do well for yourself. My biggest suggestion, and you touch upon this a little bit earlier in the conversation is, have such stay so committed to building your pipeline that you never run out. So even if like you're doing something and a, and a product fails or something of that nature, you still have 20 other 25 conversations going to people that are interested at all times. And in order to do that, you have to stay committed each and every single day of continuing to outreach and build your network. Network and community is everything. People always ask me like, how did you explode your personal brand like that in such a short time? Simple, community. Take care of your audience. Always have conversations going, things going on. And you'll never go broke, so to speak, in sales. Because if something happens, which it, spoiler alert, it will, because that's what happens in life, but specifically sales, you're never going to be in that big of a pickle if you always have a pipeline and you always have stuff going on. A lot of times I see this in sales. People start to do well. And then they take their foot off the gas because they think they've arrived. Have the mindset that you've never arrived. That doesn't mean don't celebrate milestones and, and small wins, of course, but have the mindset that you've never arrived. So even when you're crushing it and doing your thing, always be getting more in there, right? It's like, a, it's like a professional sports team that has a farm system that they bring up new players all the time. And that's how they're always so good. They're a dynasty. Never get complacent and, and keep building your network and expanding your reach. And that just might mean what Jeff is doing, putting out great content in social media every single day, staying committed to it. So people are reaching out to him. Hey, I just love to talk to you. I, I want to know how we can work with you. As long as you stay committed to the process, you'll always have a pipeline. And no matter what happens, you'll always be going like this. Yeah. Yeah. The, the number one challenge I have with every coaching client that comes to me and every company I work with, the number one challenge is they're just not seeing enough prospects. Why? Because most people hate prospecting and they don't, they, they're they doing stuff that they don't want to do instead of finding things that they don't mind doing or actually enjoy doing and focusing on those. And the other thing, and you said it, they take their foot off the gas. Like right now is a perfect example. It's the beginning of December. I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me. Jeff, you can't close business in December. I had two clients. I had two prospects turn themselves into clients Wednesday. One guy who I hadn't spoken to in two months 
emails me out of nowhere. Hey, Jeff, I don't know if you'll remember me. We spoke two months ago. I want you to be my coach. I was like, wow, this is great. And then I actually posted, hey, if you don't think you can close business in, in December, guess what? A, a prospect just reached out to me and turned himself into a client. Later that day, exact same thing. Two new clients in one day, it's December. That's all head trash, my friends. If you believe you can't close business between now and the end of the year or between Christmas and New Year's, guess what? You're not going to. I'm going to. I bet Craig is going to every day. And, and the other thing I think that's important to realize, Craig, is that while there is a relationship to between prospecting today and getting paid tomorrow, it's not prospect today and get paid tomorrow. It's prospect today and get paid somewhere way down the line. And, and when we take our foot off the gas, like let's say, let's say you and I said, you know what? It's December. What the heck? There's, there's about three weeks left. I'm just going to relax. Well, here's what happens. January 2nd rolls around. It's like, oh, well, now I'm going to start prospecting. Except, you know what? It takes a while to get that going. So you're going to be in February or maybe March before things happen again. I advise my clients and everybody, prospect every single day. I consider it the most important thing a salesperson can do on a daily basis because without that pipeline, I don't care how good you are at selling. You can't close business if you're not talking to enough people. Yeah. There, there's something else that you said that I, I thought was uh, perfect. You say that money is a renewable resource, but time isn't. I say something similar all the time. So how can salespeople be more effective with their time? Yeah, it's so true. If money, it, people are intimidated by money. They let money control them. Like newsflash, money is just a tool. It's just energy to get to you where you want to go. And, and like you said earlier in the conversation, having more of it is obviously great. But have a good relationship with money. Understand that it's just energy. You give it out, you, you bet it and invest in yourself, and money flows to you. It really is that simple. So in, in regards to that, look, like we can make as much money as we desire, straight up. We got to do the right thing and, and keep put, be, be putting yourself out there. In regards to time, that's something that we won't get back, guys. And not to sound too deep, but like you want to make the most use of your time. Like right now, like my phone's in the other room. It, it's just me, Jeff, and the, and the audience. I'm just locked in. I'm very present. I'm aware. So you want to put yourself in front of as many people as you can at, at one shot, right? Like, for example, when I was building my CLS brand in the beginning, I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients. I was learning how to monetize the business. But essentially, it was great. But number one, it was draining because it's a lot of different personalities. Number two, I was trading time for money. There's only so much time in the day. So as I began to scale, I began to have mastermind or group programs where I teach 100 people once a week in one shot. And then all those other hours, you know, I have to do other things with the business. So the best thing to do to scale or, or to collapse time, as they like to say, is, is to be in front of as many people as you can in one shot. And, and don't waste too much time doing something that doesn't serve us. We've all been there. Yeah, I'd add in, you know, make, make sure you're using your calendar. I call it calendarization. Everything goes on your calendar. Assign the right amount of time. For example, you just said something that, that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I've known for the last decade I should have a, a program, a recorded program, teaching people how to sell so that people can access that and I can make money while I sleep and people can be served in wh whenever they want. Well, I've talked about it. I've wanted to. I've hoped to for, for years and years. I blocked out time at the end of this year to actually record them and get them up. So my commitment is that by the end of January, it'll be all edited, ready to go, ready to help people. You, you got to make things happen. Uh, and, and, and there's just no time to waste. You know, no. I, I say something similar. You know, you can almost always make more money. You can almost always regain your health if you're sick, almost always. But you can't get back time. The hour we're investing right now, it's either going to pay off for you and me and everybody who's listening or it doesn't. But we'll never get it back. There, there, there's another thing that I, I saw that you said, which I, I found fascinating. I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about, more about it. You say that how you think when you lose determines how long it will take you to win. I found that fascinating. How do you suggest people should be thinking when they lose? It's a part of the process. It, it's just a setup for the comeback, right? Every setback is, is a setup for the comeback. And again, spoiler alert, life has adversity, ladies and gentlemen. Like It's inevitable. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll give you an example. Three months ago, I was training for the Chicago Marathon and I was at a big speaking engagement, keynote speaking, and we were playing football on the beach with the boys and I got injured. And I, I came back home and I got in, um, I went to go see a doctor and they said I had a sprained ligament, right? I didn't buy it because I felt my intuition. And so I facilitated an MRI. It turns out there was a tumor in my foot. Shook me up. No one wants to hear that word. 
gave myself a pity party for a couple hours. The next day, I saw the best doctors that Manhattan has to offer. I got the tumor out, came back benign, surgery done, crutches, stitches, and so forth. But I never got down on myself. I, I never asked why me. I just, and, and I, I'm, you know, I, I believe in my faith and my relationship with God. And I just said, this this pain is propelling me to something else, whatever the case would be. And as it turns out, we did recover. It was only a couple months back. And I was able to have an opportunity to get to the New York City Marathon start line. No physical training, but I was doing a lot of this with the quantum and the energy stuff. And I was able to run to, to honor my dad, who's currently battling cancer, and also raise money for American Cancer Society. So the cause was much bigger than me. And now I understand, like, that pain was propelling me for something greater. So instead of running the Chicago Marathon for myself to shock the world, I ran it for New York City only three weeks later. And I inspired my dad, raised money for cancer, and inspired my whole audience and so forth. It wasn't about Craig. And so I understand now, like every setup, every setback, you're being, every piece of pain is propelling you for something greater. Trust me, life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you, as our mutual friend Tony Robbins likes to say. So when you understand that concept, you start understanding that adversity is a part of the process. It's happening to us for a reason. Somehow there's going to be a positive after it. So how you think when you get knocked on your butt is everything because most people sadly crumble and they get dejected and they're afraid to start again. But for the ones that understand that it's just propelling you for something greater and it's just going to build character and, and, and you're going to learn from it. It's never a mistake if you learn from it. And then you take that approach to life. Every time there's a setback or some sort of piece of adversity, we power through, we become stronger for it, and we're able to catapult to the next thing. And as Bethany Hamilton, who's my good friend on the podcast, the movie Soul Surfer, she likes to say, if you have faith, anything is possible. So get up because you never know what's over the next wave. So keep getting up and understanding that it's just a part of the process. Yeah. And, and I'm pretty sure that that injury is how I found you, because I think that the way I met you was I saw a post that you had made. I think it was on LinkedIn. Maybe you were on crutches or maybe you had a cast. And I think it was you were celebrating a win because you were able to walk to your car. Something. Yes. Does that sound right? Yes, I, yes. I know I saw that. I said, I got to talk to this guy. So, yes. so even an injury can attract something good out of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, when you lose equals, what can you do differently? I like to sharpen the axe and look at it as a challenge to look inward and ask myself, how do I get better, sharper, faster? Hey, Jeff, it's Valerie Efron. Why, hey, Valerie, absolutely great to have you here. And we've got a question. Fantastic and sh exchange of ideas. Gentlemen, are there any strategies you both would recommend to get yourself to execute on important behaviors? Quadrant two, I'm not sure what that means. On days when you're not feeling it or motivation is super low. I'm going to let you handle that. Yeah, first of all, I just want to say to Valerie, I love that you said sharpen the axe because that's my phrase. I love it. Every time, every day I read and I'm journaling or, or I'm doing stuff to get better and, and fill my brain with more knowledge, I call it sharpen the axe. So I love that you said that. In regards to the other question. Um, when you're not feeling it. Yeah, when you're not feeling it. Look, and we touched upon this earlier in the conversation. This is priceless, what I'm about to say. Whenever you're not feeling it, it's feedback from the universe telling you that your current thoughts don't serve you and they're disempowering. So every time you're not feeling it, become aware, go back into your brain and just say, disempowering thoughts, get the hell out. And I'm choosing to put in, I am feeling it. I am on fire. I am grateful. I'm going to go perform an act of kindness, whatever the case may be. An attitude of gratitude is priceless. So once you realize that you can get rid of those thoughts and put in a more productive one, then all of a sudden you will begin to feel it. You'll elevate your state. You can even go back to modeling if you're not feeling it. What would James Bond do right now? Would he sulk and have a bad day? What would that guy do? And you can model the quality of his thoughts. So you get the modeling and you got the removing of the disempowered thoughts. Anytime you're feeling any type of way, guys and girls, it's just feedback from the universe telling you that your thoughts are not productive and you can replace them with more productive ones. Yeah, I'm going to throw in a little more. One is just get going. Take the first step. I find it's hard to get going, but it's much easier to keep going. So it's take that first step. You know, I, I, I co-authored a book called uh, How to Be Your Own Coach. It's about setting and achieving goals. And in there, we talk about get going. Most goal setting experts say that once you set a goal, you have to get started within 72 hours. Otherwise, you're not going to. I say get started immediately. Do the, even the smallest thing just so you start taking action. So when you don't feel it, you don't want to get out of bed, just stand up first and put on your shoes and get going. And to me also, that's the time when you call somebody who you know is not going to buy into your bullshit and they're going to say, okay, I get it. You're having a bad day. 
get up anyways. For example, my mentor in the in the professional sales training business, greatest sales trainer I've ever met, the smartest human being I personally know, also the fun, funniest human being I personally know. He's amazing. Every, I believe that every word that comes out of my mouth, I'm really just parroting him. But I will get a call every now and then from him. His name is Steve. And the call will sound like this. Jeff, it's Steve. I'm in Doha and I need a dose of Jeff. Now, I go to him for business advice. And if I don't know how to put a program together, he always has the answers. But sometimes he just he's this amazing guy. He makes a bunch of money. He helps a lot of people. But sometimes we all need somebody who can say, all right, I'll talk you off the ledge. Tell me what's going on and then I'll give it to you. We all need somebody. We're not made to go it alone. And I, I, I am a loner. I love being alone because I deal with people all day long, except you know what? We're not made that way. We, we do more together. So having somebody else uh, to help us out. Yep. I've got my last question here, but I don't even, I think I, we actually covered it. Most people talk themselves out of success before they even start is what you said. So how do we stop that little voice? Yeah, we, we pretty much talked about that. I, here's what I'd like to hear because uh, you, you, you did this in the beginning. You're in amazing shape. So there've got to be days when you don't feel like it. How do you for, uh, get yourself motivated to do take the, the type of commitment to have the kind of body you have? And it's not just, it's not just the running and it's not just lifting weights. I'm going to take a while. I guess you also eat right and you study this. So how, how, how do you, you make all that happen when it's hard? It ain't easy. I just understand that every time I work out, I feel better. And also after going through stuff, like when I had the tumor in my foot and stuff in the past, like every single day that I'm physically able to get a workout in, I am so grateful. And I don't want to like disrespect that opportunity. So for me, I'm at a point in my life, like when I was younger, I'd work out for validation. Like I wanted to look good, right? But now working out for me, I would say is 90% mental, 10% physicality. Sure, everyone wants to look good naked. But ultimately for me, getting a workout in to start my day gives me an edge. It's, it's, it allows me to cross something off the list. It also releases endorphins. There's just nothing bad about it. Working out is so good, and, and it's such a metaphor for life, right, especially with running because you just have to combat that voice in your head. Getting a good workout in keeps you in, in physical shape, but, but most importantly, keeps you in, in mental shape because it, it keeps a promise to yourself. You already did something productive. You have an edge. You took care of yourself, right, this body that we're given and so forth. And also, it's just good to stretch yourself mentally, whether that be lifting more weight or running a little farther, boxing, whatever it is that you like to do. It's just good. And I'm so grateful to be able to have the opportunity to work out. And I take advantage of it. To be honest with you, I work out every single day because I love it. I associate pleasure to it. And if I, if I ever can't get a workout in or, or a day goes a little longer and I didn't get one in yet, it makes me upset because I love to work out. I know what it does to me mentally physically, spiritually, emotionally. And to throw on top of that, I'm on a meal prep. This way I, I eat great. I understand the significance of nutrition. I didn't always. I, I recently, I, you know, I understood it. I don't want to think. I just eat, eat perfect. I'm very structured. Every few hours, I threw a meal prep in the microwave. Keeps me in good shape, and it also keeps me disciplined. And, and why do they teach you discipline like in the military or the Navy SEALs? Because that creates momentum. So nutrition is important, and working out – is really special. If you guys have the opportunity, I highly recommend making that promise to yourself to get a workout. Yeah, I think this is Valerie who says, Abe Lincoln, sharpen the ax. Uh, this is interesting. I'm guessing this is my friend, Mark Lawrence, who says Fat Boy Fit Club. So this is interesting. So um, I've recently lost 30, I think it's 34 pounds, something like that. Great job. Uh, now, for the last three years, I've wanted to lose weight. I've hoped to lose weight. I've said a bunch of times I'm going to lose weight except nothing happened until I committed. And it happened because if this is Mark, uh, it's because of him. Uh, he formed this thing on Facebook called the Fat Boy Fit Club. Now, Mark is, it is, he says, yes, it's me. So Mark is not the most in shape guy, but he formed this. He is a very funny guy though. And he formed this group for kind of fat guys to kind of maybe make a commitment to themselves. And he made a promise that he was going to lose a pound a week. And I read that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to use this guy as my inspiration. Now, he didn't know me and I didn't know him. He was just a guy on Facebook who I happened to come across, except I, I was able to take what he had created, the Fat Boy Fit Club, and say, you know what? I'm going to make a promise to these guys. And now every Friday, although I didn't do it yet today, and I actually didn't do it last week because I was a little embarrassed of my, my weight gain over the holidays, but every Friday I post my weight loss and I've been doing it for months now. And Every time I think, well, I'd really like to go back to doing what I used to do, which was eat candy all night long. I am a, 
I, I, I was a sugar junkie. A and when I got involved with this group, it gave me the help I needed to make a commitment to myself and, and start eating right, get rid of all that sugar, drink more water, uh, you know, think, things like that. Um, and, and just knowing that I have to check in each, and I don't have to, but knowing that I'm going to check in each week and either post, yeah, I gained some or I lost some, it helps keep me in line knowing that there's a bunch of other people out there who are watching. And it's also incredible. Every time I post, it, there's just a ton of encouragement. Whether I've lost or gained, there's always people out there rooting for me. So having that support system, it, it, it's huge. And there's Mark saying, it's okay, Jeff. You're doing great. Keep pushing. And also, Jeff, just touch upon that. What you're also doing is you're holding yourself accountable by putting it out there. And you don't want to let yourself down, and you don't want to let anyone else down. So by putting it out there, you know people are watching – it forces you to take a little bit more accountability. So kudos to you. Yep. Thank you, my friend. We're almost out of time. Any last minute thoughts for people to inspire them how to end this year strong and start 2022 with a bang? Yeah. 2022 is here now. Don't wait till New Year's Eve to start journaling and figuring out your goals and your visions, but also have a vision. You cannot hit a target that you cannot see. So you have to have targets, milestones, goals, moonshots, whatever the case may be. Have a plan. What does 2022 look like if you're firing on all cylinders? If you're in sales, like how many sales? How much revenue are you generating? How big is your pipeline, which I think is most important, and Jeff would agree. Have the goals, guys. Start writing them down. And let's not like tiptoe into 2022. Let's sprint. Let's do this. Everybody is capable of living the life they desire. There is nothing stopping us except our own limiting beliefs. And how do we get rid of those? We become aware that we were not born with those beliefs. We cultivated them. Get rid of those thoughts. Replace them with empowering ones. That creates new beliefs. It creates new habits. And as a result, it creates new results. Awesome advice. Uh, by the way, you mentioned something that's per perfect timing. Uh, uh, for those of you who are members of the, uh, not the Fat Boy Fit Club, the Sales Pro Network, I just scheduled, I, put, I posted it in the group. I forgot exactly which day. I think it's maybe a week from Wednesday, perhaps. I'm going to be running a goal setting exercise for you. Uh, I'm going to distribute a spreadsheet, a sheet for you to fill out. And I'm going to take you through the actual process I use with my clients to help you establish your 2022 goal. I think I might actually turn this into a Zoom meeting so we can interact, or it might just be me talking to you guys uh, through the Sales Pro Network. But if you haven't seen it yet, go to the Sales Pro Network, look for the post, and I'll be sure to post the date again. Craig, um, if people want to get in touch with you, I'm sharing my screen with them right now. What's the, what are the best ways to reach you? The best way to reach me is I hang out the most, I would say, on Instagram at Craig Siegel underscore CLS. You can find me on Facebook, Craig Siegel. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, one of the top podcasts on the planet, the CLS experience. If you like daily inspiration, all stuff like this, text our free community, 917-634-3796. That's 917-634-3796. And the website, Cultivate Lasting Symphony. You guys want to work with me with the CLS membership. These weekly Zooms, kind of like Jeff and I did right now. It's not a community. It's a family. It's a support system with like-minded individuals. It's one of my favorite things going right now. And I just love it all. But stop by and say hello. I love to interact with you guys. I love to engage. And I just want to say, Jeff, this was so much fun. I appreciate your mindset. I appreciate you. And just all the similarities and the synergies. It was a lot of fun. I feel the same way, Craig. Uh, you said before, I may, this may be the spot of a new partnership. I'd love to work with you anytime. Please be an active participant in the Sales Pro Network. I'm sure people have questions for you, and uh, they probably made a whole bunch of comments in there. And uh, thank you so much for generously sharing your brilliance with us today. And I wish you an incredible 2022. I'm looking for CLS to explode even bigger than it already has. And I know, I know it's going to. Yeah. And I'll end this as I always do, my friends. Remember this. Sales is a game of making things happen. So get out there and make sales happen. Have a great weekend, everybody. Speak to you soon. Bye, guys.